But we only scratch the surface of the meaning of the book. Why don't we define, we were using the word free grace, um, why don't we go ahead and define just what is free grace? How would we describe it? And how, how do we contrast that then uh, with the perspective, the Calvinist perspective? Let's kind of let our people know what that is, because a lot of our folks probably aren't, haven't heard of it either. Yeah. Well, there's a chapter in, in this book that I've written in the fact of what is free? Is free really free? And I think when I started with the very first chapter of that book, we got to, like you said, understand and define terms. There's many times in Christian apologetics where we think we're arguing well against somebody, but we don't realize the same words we're using, they define differently. Like if you talk to a Mormon, they'll believe in, they'll believe in grace, but not exactly how the Bible teaches. And so I appreciate that question because you always got to identify the terms. And when you think of free grace, I mean, it's one of those words that defines itself that grace is unmerited. Grace is completely free. There's no strings attached. There's no fine print. There's no hidden clause or anything written in. And we get this idea from Romans chapter four, when Paul uses Abraham as a picture of free grace. When the fact on, he says, if a man believes, if a man works, then what he receives is wages. But if a man doesn't work, but believes it's counted as grace. And when we look at Ephesians chapter two, we see that it's by grace are you saved through faith. And so if grace is free, then by definition, there can be nothing attached to it. And really, if I were to define free grace, if you will, it requires no perseverance or preservation of man to the end, because that's a fine print saying you have to persevere to the end to have eternal life. That's a work. It requires... Uh, no committing of making Jesus Lord of your life at that moment of salvation. Should a Christian make Jesus Lord of their life? Yes, definitely. To have the best Christian life, they have got to make Jesus the Lord. But is it a requisite for eternal life? It's not, because if it was, so many passages in the Bible would be missing that key ingredient saying, you have got to make Jesus Lord. For God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him and makes Jesus Lord of their life shall re it doesn't say that. And so really, I think free grace really defines itself. But the problem is, is so many people take that word free and they want to attach many things to it, whether they want to front load or back load the works. Either you got to do something to receive it or you have to do something to keep it. Or like Piper's case with sal final salvation, you have to do something to have it at the very end. Mm -hmm. And so there's really three schools of thoughts and free grace is no God promises by simple faith freely, because there's nothing I can do. If it was predicated on me to keep salvation, I would have lost it 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but thankfully it's not predicated on my continuing, but it's predicated on his promise and his faithfulness that we can have eternal life now. So just for clarity, I'm going to let Gabe jump in here, but mm -hmm. do you consider yourself, you consider yourself free grace, but not a Calvinist. Mm -hmm. And is that similar to being an Arminian? Uh, how, how do you view, how do you pigeonhole yourself there? Now, again, there's a false dichotomy out there mm -hmm. that if one's not mm -hmm. a Calvinist, mm -hmm. then naturally they're Arminian. Right. And if you're not Arminian or Calvinist, it, and mm -hmm. arguments like that have been around for centuries, if not even longer, millennia, and the fact on. No, I would not hold to the tenets of Arminianism either, because Arminian teaches the fact that you can lose your salvation. Mm. And I look at the passage in Hebrews chapter six, where the author of Hebrews talks about for if you lose, uh, if he tasted the heavenly gift and then he lost salvation, that you cannot put Christ on the cross again. You cannot get resaved. If you take that view, I know there's various right. uh, interpretations of Hebrews chapter six, four through six. But according to the Arminian view, if someone were to lose their salvation, That's taking it. that view mm -hmm. of Hebrews 6, mm -hmm. there's no way to get resaved right. again. And plus, you got the aspect that it's predicated on if I can continue. And the biggest tenet with Arminianism for me is a fact on I can't lose my salvation because God loves me enough to offer it freely. And it's only by his power to keep it. 
And so whereas Calvinism teaches works to really prove you're a Christian, Arminius say works to go ahead and keep your salvation, otherwise you lose it. To me, they're both fear tactics. I'm not going to say uh, that they're cultish. I just think it's good people, good Christians that are coming away with bad theology, and they're inserting philosophy into scripture. But when you look at Mormonism, you look at Jehovah's Witnesses, you look at Islam, you look at some of these other uh, cults, if you will, they all have a fear tactic embedded in it to keep people in their theology or their religion. And it's similar to that on both sides. I'm not going to say that it's as bad or that far. They're not cults, but it's the same sort of idea. There's this fear that's embedded in to keep something that God gives freely and willingly to whosoever. And so as far as Arminius tenets, no, I would reject those as well. Yeah, good stuff there. Good stuff. I like how in the book you talked about like free being free means free, right? Free has meant the same thing 2000 years ago, a thousand years ago today. Free means free. And a lot of times today people will try to reinterpret it, add something to it. Maybe um, put something into the text that wasn't there to begin with, but I loved how you made it clear. Free means free. Um, Question for you. um, What I notice is, do you like these pejorative words such as like genuine, spurious, authentic when referring to like faith, recurring believers? Like what do you, what's your take on those? You know, whenever I see words like that, it always makes me uh, put the red flags up. (laughs) You know, if if I'm reading articles or if I'm listening to people and they talk about genuine Christian, the only one that knows really if I'm a Christian or not is me and God. Now, I'm telling all of y'all that I'm saved. I got saved years back and I gave my life to Christ. I received the free gift of eternal life by faith in what he did on the cross for me. Now, you guys are trusting in my testimony but you guys can't guarantee that I actually am a Christian. Yeah. That's between me and God. And there's so many times where people will look at somebody's life and say, oh, he can't be a Christian because he he's doing this. But what if they saw that one person having a really bad day and they just succumbed to their flesh? They wanted to yell, punch, whatever the case is. We seen that person one time in the course of the week, and it was a bad time for the person. So whenever I think of like genuine or a, a real Christian terms like that, it really puts my flags up to really think, okay, what are they going to say? Number one, you can't really tell who's genuine apart from their testimony and trusting what they say. Now, in the end, when we all go to heaven or when we don't go to heaven, we'll find out who really was genuine. <laughs> and uh, But here on this earth, terms like that, they just, they make me to be cautious in what I teach folks uh, when we're teaching care at this church is words like that. You should slow down and listen to what they're saying. Okay. Now I don't have a problem with the words, but I have a problem with how they're used within passages and man's philosophies, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when you say genuine believer, you infer that you can be a believer, but you're not genuine. And that's where the struggle comes up. Right. And then there's some Calvinists out there that will teach that even you don't even know if you're genuine until the very end and you get final salvation or you have have this false faith, like you were mentioning, too, that they have a false faith Mm -hmm. uh, that they think it's real, but it's really not. And that's a misleading of God and and scripture and everything else. 